hello so today i'm gonna bring you a little bit something different today i wanted to give you a tour of one of my most favorite sketchbooks that i have ever completed and this is my stargazer journal so um this journal in particular is a journal from mossery um and let me first let me uh make it look pretty for you before i start right <laughs> so here is um the little imprint in the back and i will leave all of the information and a link where you can get your own um in the description below so this journal from mossery is one of their older versions and i'll tell you what the difference is now this one as you can see they are spiral bound journals and this one has a permanent cover so this cover does not fall not come off and i will show you after we're done with um this sketchbook i have another one that i just started working on so i will show you um what the new ones look like so you can get them personalized at no extra charge and this one um, has my name, it's Vanessa. And for this one, I just chose a very simple gradient pink, purple, blue cover. And it is the same on both sides. And it is made of heavy cardboard. Um, I didn't really think when I purchased this just how dirty <laughs> this this cover would get. But it's still, it's beautiful. It's, it's a lay flat. Lay flat. So it has a nice little uh, tie here to keep all of your um, pages secure. And it also comes with a little bookmark. So when you open it up, it comes with a little uh, pocket, a little folder here and on both sides. And it comes with a swatch card with the paper that is in this sketchbook and i'll talk about the paper in just a second but as you can see here i swatched some watercolors and some gouache some from arteza and some from Hemi, and i put the dates where i started and finished this sketchbook so i started in september of 2019 and i finished in december of 2020. so this one took me quite a while because i would start it and stop it and start it and stop it um uh, depending on how inspired I felt. So the first couple of pages are pages where you can put your information, such as your name, your contact information. It has some grid paper in the front if you're into bullet journaling, which I am, uh, but uh, I don't use this for bu bullet journaling. Um, it has a couple of pages in the front. This one says values and beliefs. This one is an inspiration board. It says collect your favorite things all with grid paper. So there are a couple of pages of that. And then here it has uh, three things I want to improve, change, or achieve. And you can see that I did nothing with any of that except put my name in it. And then you get this uh, little insert. And then after this is where the journal begins. So I decided when I first purchased this journal, and I'm usually not very particular about journals, right? I usually don't fuss with them. Journals are for practice. They're for you. They're to just kind of paint and get to know your supplies and things like that. So my journals are a mess. But for this one, um, I decided this journal was so, so pretty that I wanted to um, do something special with it. So I made this my stargazer journal. So if you have been here before and have looked around my channel, I have found me over on Instagram, you'll know that I paint a lot of celestial themes, galaxies and planets and nebulas and abstract, you know, celestial paintings. So that's what I wanted this to be. And I also did a bunch of lettering and wording and my favorite phrases and things like that. I incorporated it all into this journal so this is the first page of this journal and it just says stargazer journal it has a couple of, of phrases and i started it on 9 19 19. i used a lot of my metallic watercolors in these journals so you're going to see a lot of shimmery metallic areas um and i really just played around 
quite a bit with this journal and I didn't really have any expectations of it other than I wanted it to uh, be about celestial pieces and about the moon and things like that. Um, here is another piece. This was more of an experimental um, stage that I was going through with my watercolors and I was kind of looking at what colors went well together, what colors didn't go well together, and I did a lot of um, experimenting here with, uh, with this journal. This page, I use one of my absolute favorite colors, which is um, Moon Glow by Daniel Smith. And Moon Glow is just this beautiful, beautiful separating color. And this is the background of it is Moon Glow. And it's just this beautiful separating color. And you can see all of like these blues and purples and like these dusky colors come out of of that one pan. So I use Moon Glow quite a lot. And then I used Twilight, which is um, a really light, light gold. And it looks very nice and very soft. So for this one, I was experimenting a lot with um, sort of like the idea of like falling stars and what that looked like. And a lot of the things that I used in this journal, I brought it out of the journal and incorporated them into other pieces. This one was a bit of a mess. <laughs> this one was also sort of like an experiment um, with colors. I was looking to see what colors went well together and how the planets would look with shimmers on them. And I wasn't really too happy with how this one turned out. You can see on this here that I incorporated quite a number of shimmers into this piece, into this planet. And I wasn't, I wasn't very happy with how it came out, but you know, it's part of my journal, it's part of the process. This piece here, I was experimenting with clouds and what those um, clouds would, would look like. So I was experimenting with like super fluffy clouds and soft clouds and this, um, you know, even, even though I uh, wanted this journal to look like, look nice, I also experimented quite a bit with it. So you'll see that, um, you know, I was experimenting with uh, the different textures in the clouds, how I could water them down a bit, you know, how that would look. And um, yeah, I really liked this one. And I put a very silvery, shimmery, white watercolor over it. It looks silver, but it, it really is. It's white with uh, flecks of white glitter in it. And it's called Bubbly. And all of the shimmer that I use in my journals are from my line of watercolors, the Sprout Creative. And I'll also have all of that information um, linked below. I also have regular mats that I use for my journal as well. Um, and I'll have those linked below. And this is uh, one of my favorite um, pieces in my journal. And I just, I actually did, I used this as an inspiration to do a bigger piece um, as a commission for a child's bedroom. So I practiced it here first. And um, yeah, I really like it. It just has, you know, all of the planets in order and um, just sort of like this whimsical, you know, feel to it. I really enjoyed this one. And next we have um, another planet. And for this, for this one in particular, I was experimenting with the rings around the planet and how that would look. And I really didn't like this one. So I ditched this. This is the one and only time that you will see uh, this sort of ring around one of my planets because I really ended up not liking um, the way that that looked. And over here, we have uh, me trying to draw an astronaut for the very first time and it came out very like boxy and square but I really like the way that it um, took up space in this in this piece and you'll see for most of my pieces I do two page spreads and um, I really do like the way it kind of filled up the piece over here 
And um, you will also notice that I went through a phase of putting like, you know, these uh, metallic circles over the entire piece. And I really liked it. I also liked um, uh, writing, you know, some little sayings around the circles as well. I really liked, you know, I really enjoyed doing that. And you will see here that the astronaut has a reflection of what uh, they are seeing on their on their helmet, on their visor. So there are the mountains and there's uh, a little moon and it's reflected on their visor. Uh, the next page, I was experimenting for this one. I was really trying to experiment with using very soft colors and I wanted to see how that would look. Would it, would it still translate into looking like, you know, a celestial piece or, you know, a planet or outer space? And I think that it really did. I think it did well. I complemented a lot of the background colors with the shimmers that I used. And one of the things I really enjoyed is this right here. I wrote, um, you know, a bunch of little sayings. Uh, like here it says, when it's dark, look for the stars. Over here it says, I had always seen myself, I, I had always seen myself as a star. So each one has little sayings. And you'll see here that I did the falling star motif again, but I also put a little drop shadow in white. And I just, I really enjoyed uh, the way that looked. So you see this um, particular shimmer is called Confetti and it is a duochrome, so it's pink and purple. And I thought that it would go really well with the color of the background for this piece. Here we have another one where I incorporated the falling stars with the with the back uh, with the drop shadow and a couple of sayings and hand in hand on the edge of the stand they danced by the light of the moon and here is what I'm saying I, I superimposed a, a ton of circles into my pieces I did that quite a bit and I really love like the the background the softness of the bottom and just going out into the really dark areas around the moon. This one was just very simple. I was feeling very melancholy that day. So I just did a simple background and some simple lettering or some simple lines and just, you know, wrote a couple of things down. She liked the moon because like herself, it shined its bright it shined its brightest when no one was around to see. Stay wild, moon child. It was a very melancholy day for me this day, as you can tell. <laughs> Oh, this is absolutely my, well, I have four, four favorite spreads. This is my number two favorite spread. I love this one. And I did a purple and green background. And then on top of that, I'm not sure you can really tell, but I put a multi-chrome watercolor. And it is kind of hard to tell that it's a multi-chrome against this, but it shines blue and green and purple. I also put a few multi-chromes in the planets that are hanging from from the top here. And I just, I love, love, love the shine of these planets. Look at that. Oh, it's one of my favorite, favorite things. And then over here, you can really see the purple come out. This is, the background is all, all the shimmer on the background is all one color but it looks um, different because again, it is a multi-chrome. And then I have the moon here and you can see how it shines. Oh, I love, I love that. And the inspiration you seek is already within, be silent and listen. And now this is my number one favorite spread. And it's so simple. Again, I used the multi-chrome in the background. I painted the background dark blue and purple. 
and then I used a multi-chrome over the entire background. And again, you can't really see it too well because I have so many bright lights shining onto this piece. A nice simple moon and then the circles that I was so fond of back then. I am a warrior of the universe made of stardust and cosmic dreams. I am a warrior of love and light fighting life's battles and not just surviving but thriving. Who is this girl? Who is this girl? <laughs> but I love I love this one as well and I just I absolutely love just the color that shines and oh beautiful. This is another one where I was just experimenting. This is another one of those days that I didn't really have much motivation to paint. But I wanted to put some paint on paper and I wanted to complete another spread in this book. And it's just a very simple one. Very simple. Nothing, nothing to write home about. And this is my last favorite one. This one says, maybe I belong amongst the stars. And again, this one is very simple. It's a very simple piece. It's just a dark background with a white moon and some gold accents. And I just, I really love it. I think I love it the most because of its simplicity. Um, did I skip a page? No. Here I was experimenting with um, doing some florals in a moon. And I'm not 100% sure how I liked it. I tried it a couple of times. I think this one was my most successful one. But I'm not 100% sure how I, how I really like it. Um, and for the complimentary page, I just kind of did a couple of planets with some metallic watercolor and called it a day. Next up is this piece and I used, or this spread, I used a ton of different colors for this background. I used pink and orange and blue and purple, a little bit of green. And then on top of the whole thing, I sprinkled in some multi-chrome watercolors and I kept this one fairly simple because I loved the background so much that I really wanted it to stand out and I didn't want to mess around too much with, uh, with the foreground of it. I really wanted the background to shine in this piece. Um, this one is uh, just a little doodle, <laughs> I guess you could say, of planets. Um, in the solar system and yeah there's nothing really too special about this one um, I should say that for almost all of these paintings I have videos up for them on Instagram showing the process so you can go take a look at those there if you are interested here is another simple one where I really wanted to just kind of showcase the background and there's a ton of um, shimmery accents and metallic accents to this one. This one was, again, more about the background than anything else. Here is something that was a little out of the ordinary for this page, for this um, book. But it was a little mountain scape with the moon, a little bit of like snow falling. And I actually have videos of both sides of this as well over on my Instagram. And for some reason, these the, the videos of these are like very, very popular. Um, but yeah, if you want to see how I did this, you can you can go over there and check it out. But just some mountain ranges and a moon. Very simple, but very lovely. Um, here is one that I did while I was live on Instagram. Um, and again, I wanted to keep this one simple. I wanted the background to kind of speak for itself. And this, uh, painting this sun, if you would call it, is uh, one of the first times that I use this like splatter technique where there are radiating splatters coming out. And I, ever since I've used that technique, and you'll see, it is just, um, you know, like splatter falling away from the sun. And every single time I use this technique, I just felt more and more in love with it and you will see me use this quite a bit. I use this in a ton of my celestial pieces now because 
I love it. And this is where I played around and got the inspiration for it. I don't know what I was attempting here, but this is the single spread that I absolutely dislike the most in uh, <laughs> in my in my journal. You can see here that I was trying to work on those uh, splattery pieces again. It got a little out of hand. I don't know what happened. So we are just going to sail right over this page. <laughs> here is another one where I used a lot of multi-chromes. So here um, I'm going to show you an angle where you can see it blue. And here's an angle where you can see it look purple. Over up here is an angle where you can see this look green. And uh, here you can see it. Uh, pink and red and blue. This is all the same. This is all the same color. This this one here is the same multi-chrome. Um, it just, it's different angles. So I really wanted to show off some multi-chromes here. Um, although this one was very hard to photograph, so I, I was not able to photograph this one because the multi-chromes are quite difficult to photograph. Here is another one. I was feeling really bright and sunny and light on this day. And isn't it so great that uh, painting in your journal, you're able to recall, you know, what you were feeling and the emotions that, that you were going through and looking at your journal kind of evokes those emotions again. And I was just feeling very, very happy and very bright and very sunny. And I was in a really good mood. And I, I painted this and it sort of reflected that mood I was in. And you'll see here, that um, I did the uh, rays from behind uh, this planet in a shimmery watercolor and then they break behind the clouds. And I just, I really love, I really love the way that came out. We are nearing the end. This is just another little piece where instead of falling or hanging stars, I wanted to try some hanging planets. And I think that that came out really cute. I put some clouds in the midst of them. And yeah, I really like the way that one came out. Here's another very simple one that I used, again, some of that gold watercolor. And the gold watercolor you see throughout is called Solaris. Solaris. And this one is just a very simple, very simple piece. You'll see I was still trying to perfect that. Uh, dripping radiating technique that I have grown to love here is another simple one for this one I was um, trying to uh, practice the technique that you see here um, which is sort of like giving like the little silhouettes with the inside sort of uh, invisible and I practiced it in all three of the pieces I also put in some multi-chrome. This multi-chrome is called Sorcerer. It has pink and orange and red. And um, I put the multi-chrome throughout the entire piece. And that was, that is it. So I will show you the back of the journal. You also have a nice little pocket here that you can use to um, store, you know, rulers and, and templates and things like that. And we are done with with my, my Stargazer journal. It is, I absolutely love this. And it was one of those really special uh, moments in time because I got to do this and share this with all of my friends over on Instagram and I did a lot of them live and you know people were looking forward to it it was just such a very special special time for this so let me talk to you a little bit about the paper because I know that is one of the, the the questions that I get most asked about is the paper so you'll see here that the paper is let's put it yes but the right one the paper is very very thick so when you go on the Mossery website it's mosseryco.com if I'm not mistaken you have the option of picking whatever paper you want in your journal in your sketchbook you can pick regular paper marker paper watercolor paper and you can also pick the weight and the type so every time I purchase a journal which has only been three <laughs> I always purchased it with 
100% cotton watercolor paper and 300 GSM. So the paper is very, very thick and sturdy and I usually don't have to do anything. Um, every once in a while, if I know that I'm going to use a ton, a ton of water, I will take one of these clips and then just sort of clip it down so that it doesn't curl up, but it dries, as you can see here, pretty flat. I mean, it does have um, some, a little bit of uh, warping to the edges, but I mean, it's nothing that would discourage me from purchasing um, that paper. It is absolutely a great paper to work with. I also have a new one that I just purchased. Well, I didn't just purchase it. I held off on purchasing this one until I was done with this one. So you see here that I purchased it and I started it on 12, 28, 20. And I was, I was, it was my treat for finishing this one. So the difference between these is um, right here. You can see that the original one, the spiral is on the outside of it. And the reason for that is because this per this cover is permanent. And the new sketchbooks have covers that come out. So instead of purchasing a whole new sketchbook, you can just purchase a cover. And the cover is very, very sturdy. And it has a soft matte finish to it. And then you just insert your sketchbook. So you can purchase just the cover or you can purchase the sketchbook. And Mossery collaborates with other artists to bring you a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of beautiful, beautiful covers. So I have this one that I purchased and my good friend Keisha purchased this one for me. And this one says, I inspire. And again, it's one of those removable covers and it comes with all of the same um, things that the original one came with. It comes with a swatch card and um, the uh, few pages in the front where you can do like bullet journal style and then it has your regular pages inside of it. I haven't started this one, but I accidentally got some paint on in it. But this sketchbook, I am not going to start until... I finish this sketchbook because this is my my second one and I have already started it I started this one um, 12 28 20 and this is my first page and I put it down for a really long time well as you can see I put it down for almost all of 2021 but I recently picked it back up again and I just finished this piece yesterday so I'm going to do the complimentary piece on this side today but I only have uh, four pages done in this one. So I'm really looking forward to um, starting this one. And again, you can see that I put my name on it and I, I am really um, enjoying, well, I'm, I'm really looking forward to going back in and finishing uh, another journal. This is my Stargazer 2 journal and this one will be my Stargazer 3. So I will, once I finish my second one, I will start on, on this one. And, and yeah, I just, I absolutely love these journals. So I hope that you enjoyed this, uh, tour through my Stargazer sketchbook. And, um, hopefully I will get done with this one this year. But again, just as I did with this, I will be recording the process for um, this journal. I'll be recording a lot of the pages over on Instagram so you'll be able to see them. Maybe I'll even do some videos here on YouTube filling up some of uh, these uh, pages in this journal. So I hope you enjoyed them and I will see you in the next video. Bye!